Hey everyone! In this series of videos, I'll show you how to produce what I call a basic screencast, similar to the one that you saw in the introduction. If you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link to it below so you can check out what I mean when I say basic screencast. Now, in this first video of this series, I'll give you an overview of the production process that I use to create this type of video. Okay, let's get to work! I like to start some of my videos with a question. So the question I'll address in this video is, what are the steps in producing a basic screencast? Video production is generally split into three parts, pre-production, production, and post-production. You'll also need to distribute your video so your students can view it. Pre-production is everything you do before hitting the record button. Production is the actual act of recording. Post-production is editing your video. Distribution is the process of making your video accessible to your students, and here will involve posting your video on YouTube and or on a learning management system like Canvas, if your school or university has one. The video you are watching now is video 1 in this series. Videos 2 through 5 will deal with pre-production, videos 6 through 8 with production, video 9 with post-production, and video 10 with distribution. First, we'll examine pre-production, which generally takes the longest. Video 2 will show you how to plan your video. The first step is to decide what to teach by selecting your learning objectives. College professors will have more freedom here than teachers of younger students, but as much as possible, I recommend taking a good hard look at what you're teaching and why. For example, maybe you want to focus more on skills than content, or if you're a math teacher, want to focus more on math involved in financial literacy. You'll also have to decide how to teach your content. So you should select exactly what the students will do to achieve the learning objectives. Here is where you decide whether video is in fact the best way to teach them something, and how else you want them to learn the content be it from reading, speaking, doing problems, whatever. If you've taught the material before, planning your video probably won't take that long since you already know what to teach and how to teach it. In video 3, I'll go through the equipment that I use to record a basic screencast. Basically, just an iPad, a stylus, and a microphone. In video 4, I'll give you a detailed tutorial on how to use a screencasting program. I use Explain Everything, so that's what I'll show you, but if you want to use another program you certainly can, but how you complete production will be a bit different from what I show you. In video 5, I'll show you how to lay out your visual content for your video within Explain Everything. This includes all the writing like the word writing that just appeared, and media, which includes images, like this one. You'll put all the writing and media you want to show down on a page and explain everything. At this point, you can also import slides if you already have them prepared. Here are the visuals I laid out before recording the video you're watching now. The page has everything that will appear in this video. Laying out everything in advance helps you organize the content in a logical way, which will make it easier for the students to follow. For example, I knew that I had four stages of video production I wanted to talk about. So I split the page up into four parts. Having your visuals laid out in advance will also make the video flow better, 
and will make you more comfortable with the content while you're recording. Once you have your visual content ready, it's time to move on to the production phase. In video 6, I'll show you how to record your screencast using Explain Everything. Using a screencasting program like this one can save a lot of time and, in my opinion, results in a better video. You also won't have to record multiple takes because it's easy to fix mistakes. Screencasting programs also typically have lots of nice features for teaching. In video 7, I'll teach you how to speak into the camera so you can make what I call a talking head video. You've probably seen these in the first few videos I made, and you saw one at the beginning of this video as well. In these, you speak directly into the camera. This took me a long time to get comfortable with, but some people are good at it right away. Now, these talking head videos are optional but I think they help form a stronger connection with your students. They're also a good opportunity to provide some encouragement, or review what you covered in the last video and preview what you'll talk about in the current video. In video 8, I'll show you how to create a learning guide. This can take many forms, but in the simplest form is just a few questions at the end of the video that students must answer. I also provide my students with a partially filled in version of the visual content of each page. It's a kind of skeletal notes they have to fill in, so they have to actually write down most of what's in the video. Checking whether the students do the learning guide is crucial for their retention of the material you present, and I strongly suggest incentivizing students to complete them, because students must do the work to do the learning. Passively viewing videos might be good entertainment, but it's a poor form of learning. Once you've created your video, it's time for post-production. In video 9, I'll teach you how to edit your video using Explain Everything. If you've made talking head videos to go with your screencast, you can combine those videos with your screencast so they become one video. You can also remove stray sounds, reduce or extend pauses, and fix any mistakes you may have made. Last, we have distribution. In video 10, I'll show you how to post your videos both to YouTube and to the Learning Management System Canvas, so they can be viewed by your students and maybe even students across the world. Again, the person who does the work does the learning. So before viewing the rest of these videos, select a small topic in your class to make a video for. One that only takes you five minutes or so to teach. Then, as you watch each of these videos, actually complete the part of the production process that's described in each video before moving on. For example, after watching video 5, actually lay out everything you want to appear in your video on a page and explain everything. After watching video 6, record your screencast. If you do this, by the time you've watched all these videos, you will have produced a screencast for your students. Once you have, feel free to email me a link for your video with the subject line, Video Feedback, and I'll give you some feedback on your video. Okay, so by now you should be familiar with the steps involved in making a basic screencast. Now, the first video that you make may take you a while, but the more videos you make, the less time it will take you and the better your videos will become. So stick with it, and hopefully you'll begin to enjoy the creative process of video production. I know I do. Now, in the next video, 
I'll show you how to plan your video. See you then.